Hello everybody, welcome to the first tutorial of the Resolve Store. This tutorial is made specifically for beginners to understand the basics of DaVinci Resolve 16. Don't worry, there's no major change in version 17's interface, so all these things apply to version 17 too. Let's jump into the tutorial. The first time you open up the DaVinci, you should see just the untitled project. Whenever you see this icon, it means there's a menu you can open up. So if you click on it, we can see all our databases. By default, DaVinci has a local database created automatically for you on the main drive where you saw the DaVinci. This is fine if you just have one drive in your PC, but if you have multiples, I highly recommend you create a new database on a drive, which should not be where you run your system because this database will become bigger and bigger in size and might slow down your computer in the long run. So just a new database. We don't want to connect to an already existing database, but create a new one. To create, it's correct to click on Disk. PostgreSQL is just for online databases and server databases. We don't care about that right now. Now you can choose a thumbnail for the database if you want. And you can name it. And I can choose a location. In this case, my volume E is an empty memory, which I actually use for work. So that's the one where I'm going to create a new database. So I'm going to select this. And here I'm going to right click the new folder and I'm going to name this tutorial underscore DB. Enter, set a folder, we have it. Now we can create. We just have to let DaVinci run for a couple of seconds and then we have our tutorial folder. Now we can close this up. The first thing I'd like to do in this case, since I like to keep everything organized, is to create a new folder. And again, name it tutorials. And in this folder, just double click to open it up create a new project, and let's call it tutorial underscore one underscore introduction. So here we are in the DaVinci. Let's have an overview of the overall interface. DaVinci is divided into seven tabs. And so we have the media pool, which is used to grab all the files from your drivers so that you can use them in the program. We have the cut page, which is, let's call it a live version of the edit page, but consists of a lot of uh, main functions of the edit page. The next one is the edit page right here. This is where you can trim your video and all your tracks. Here you can add transitions, effects, titles, and much more to your video. Next up, we have the fusion page, which is actually our composite page used for creating intros, animated titles, um, VFX, green screen, all things related to compositing. Next up, we have the color page, which is for color correction and grading. Fairlight is used for everything related to audio. And after that, we have the deliver page, which is actually where we'll export our edits. That said, today we're gonna to understand media pool, edit, and then finally the deliver page. Don't worry though, we're gonna make several tutorials in the future explaining every single page of the resolve. So if you don't want to miss them, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button. That said, let's jump into the media pool. DaVinci has a completely customizable layout, so your page might not look like mine right from the beginning. That said, let's analyze what we have on screen right now, okay? This portion right here, called the media storage, is exactly like your storage in Windows or Finder on a Mac. So you can navigate this exactly as you would navigate them on the bottom. Then we have the media pool, this is everything that we have in the Resolve. Of course, we haven't imported anything for now, so this is not populated yet. In the media pool, we can create some subfolders to keep everything organized. And the way to do so is to right click and create a new bin. A bin is just a different name for the folder. Before we start importing any type of file, I just want to scroll quickly through the options of the project settings to show you which one should be of interest for you. Timeline resolution and frame rate, uh, you really don't have to worry about this for the resolve. Whenever you're importing footage, it'll ask you to, if you want to change your current settings to match the ones of the video that you're importing. Video monitoring, this is quite important. Depending on the monitor that you're using, you should make this accordingly. The letter P here stands for progressive. 
This is what you want. That said, we have the section for optimized media. This is the best way to speed up your playback in DaVinci. Optimized media, easy to encode the type of files. In this case, what I highly recommend you to choose is if you're on a PC, DNX, HR, HQ, or LB. These are three different qualities basically and you can separate HQ. And if you see that your playback is a bit slow, you can drop to a different quality. If you're on a Mac, you should see here ProRes. Mind that DaVinci won't automatically create optimized video for you. You'll have to force it to create them for each file that you're importing or just specific files. Perfect, we're all set. We can just start importing the files. Uh, now we have a bunch of files and you might see them like this. The main plus for me for the DaVinci is that you can actually preview whatever you want to import in a player here. So let's say I'm thinking of importing this video here. I can double click it and it pops up into my player. And that said, let's start importing some footage. So again, to keep everything organized, let's open up the footage folder in a media pool. So let's drag in this one. And then let's say we want to import this one and this one possibly, and then this one. Uh, we, now we've got four clips to play with. We're all set. So we can jump into our edit page. The interface for you may look different as I have already customized it to my needs. So let's say we want to create a new timeline with the clips that we already have here. We can select all of them. Then what you can do is right click and select create a new timeline. You can use the clips that have already been selected and you can name the timeline. So let's call it tutorial. And so we can just hit create. As you can see, DaVinci has already created the timeline for us. We can also choose to have different players with this icon. So having two players will allow us to always have the right one displaying the timeline and use the left one to see uh, everything else. So let's say I want to import different piece of, a different piece of footage. I can double click on it. It'll pop up in the left player. And of course, DaVinci will tell me the name of the clip that we have going on here. So let's start playing with our clips and see how we can train them. The first tool that is automatically selected in the DaVinci is the selection tool. The shortcut for it on your keyboard is just A. You can use it to move it. If you click and drag the clip around, you can create different layers or just place it in another position. The other thing you can do with the selection mode is to actually trim a single clip. So for example, let's say I want to trim this clip. I can just click on the border of it and you see that my mouse icon changes. And then I can drag it and you see I can move it around. The other thing I can do then, for example, is to change the point at which two clips are cut. So let's say I want to add a bit more of this clip into the edit and remove some of this. What I can do is place my mouse in between the two clips and drag it. And as you can see, I'm changing the point where the cut is happening. And in the player on the top right, we can see the last frame of the first clip and the first frame of the second clip. So the next tool is the trim mode. Shortcut is T on your keyboard and it becomes highlighted. With the trim mode tool, what we can do is we can clean the same way we did with the selection tool. But in this case, if we trim the clip, you see that everything else after the clip stays attached to the timeline. Next up, we have the blade tool. The blade tool is actually used to create cuts in between one clip. So there are two ways to use it. You can either place it wherever you see a preview on the player of where you're going to be cutting. Then just left click and it'll create a cut but this isn't a very precise way to do it. So again, control command Z to set. One better way to do so is to actually place your playhead or mouse in the point in which you want the cut to happen. So you can use your left and right arrow, the key to move one frame forward or backward uh, in the timeline. And let's say I want to cut exactly here. Then DaVinci is smart enough to know that if I'm near the playhead, I want to cut on it. So you see that there's a thin red line wherever I have the blade tool, which disappears when I place the blade more or less on the playhead. So if I create a cut here, the cut happens exactly where the playhead is. 
Now let's jump into the inspector panel. Here we have the composite mode, which is used if you have multiple layers. For now, we'll skip it, but the transform here is the one that we want to focus on. Now let's say that I want to zoom into these mushrooms in, let's say, in half a second. We're on a 24 frames per second project. This means that half a second will be 12 frames. So what I can do now is, first of all, keyframe the zoom option at the point where I want the zoom in to start. Or what we can do then, we can see, okay, we're at 22.02. So the 12th frame would be on 22.14. We can just go there, press the left arrow to move backward one frame. And here, what we're going to do, we can just increase the zoom to the point which we like, something like this. And you see the DaVinci automatically creates a keyframe for us where we already had a keyframe before. And what we can do is then go back a bit and watch what happens. You see, it looks like it's zoomed. If you see, this icon has appeared for us on this clip. Whenever you create a keyframe, this icon will show up here on the clip. If we click on it, it opens up this graph. And what this graph is telling us is the time, horizontally, and the value for whichever option we've opened up here vertically. And as you can see at this timestamp, we have the zoom at zero. Okay, you can see I place my mouse over it here and it says zoom at zero. And here we have this timestamp. We have the zoom at 1.6. Okay. And it continues like this. But if we zoom in, these two keyframes are not smooth. So what we can do next is to use any of these three smooth options. This is for a starting point, midpoint, and any point. In this case, this one is a starting point. And you see DaVinci eases the transition. And you can do the same thing here. This is an endpoint, so watch what happens. You've seen how more morbid this is and more aesthetic it is. Let's say then we want to add some titles. So let's close this up. Let's go back to the beginning. And let's say we want to add a title to this video. You see, what you have here is the effects library. And in it, we have a lot of stuff. We have video transitions, which are just drag and drop if you want to. So for example, cross dissolve. I can just drag it in and drop it in here. And it appears in the timeline. But again, I go back with the titles. Here, if you select titles, you have a bunch of types. To me, I personally say always use text, simple text. You can just drag it and drop it into the timeline. We can zoom out a bit. By default, DaVinci sets any clips that you drag in to five seconds. You can trim it basically like you're between any other clip. And let's trim this, okay? And you see it's trimmed perfectly. Then what you can do is you can type the text that you want. Tutorial underscore zero one, for example. Simple. You can choose the font whatever you want to choose. For example, Roboto. For now, which should look nice for titles. This menu here is, is exactly like any other type of menu that you would find in any editor or text editor. You can choose the color. For example, turn this orange for no reason at all. Or you can either play with a single part. For example, I want this to be white. So you can see that by selecting it, you can choose different types of options. Let's say now that you want to export whatever you've created. You have to go to the deliver page and from here, okay, let's have a look at the interface. On the bottom part, you can see your timeline. You can see all the clips that you have in it. On this portion here on this panel, you can basically choose all the settings for export. And in this panel here, you have the render queue. So um, you can first create a bunch of different renders. So let's say you want a high resolution render, a low resolution render. You can add them all in here and then start rendering and render all of them up in one single session. DaVinci has presets for YouTube, Vimeo, or most commonly used files, H.264 master or H.265 master. Today, we're going to see the custom one with all the options available. 
On top, we can choose to browse the location and name for export. Uh, and we want to name it Tutorial 01. Okay, we can just hit save and it will save in whichever folder that we're currently in. Okay, you see, you can see the name and the path. You can either choose to render a single clip, meaning that this will all be rendered as a single video or individual clips. You can choose to export a video or not. You can tell it that you just want to export the audio of your track. You can select the video and it would just export the audio track. You can choose the format. In this case, for example, let's say we want to upload to YouTube, then it would be an MP4 H264 encoder, a native. Resolution and frame rate will already be matched into the timeline that you're currently on. So you don't need to mess with this. Of course, you can choose to change this up. So let's say at the end, you decide that you want to export in 4K. That's okay. You can change this to 4K quality. You can either choose to leave it at the best or you can limit it. If you already know the platform in which you're exporting to, for example, for YouTube, if you're exporting it, choose 1080, 20,000 kilobytes per second is more than half. So 20 megabits per second, it's fine. If you're exporting 4K, you might want to bump it up to 80,000 kilobytes. Everything else, you could leave it as it is and you don't need to worry about it. Well, let's see, we're all set for these options. We can just hit up to the render queue and then you see this job is up here. So let's say that then we want to have a different export, which would be our low resolution uh, option. We can choose HD. We can bump this down to 20,000 kilobytes, okay? Add to the render queue. You see, we have now two jobs. And what we can do now is select both of them and hit start render. DaVinci will start rendering and just mind that when it's rendering, you cannot work on the DaVinci, okay? All right, if you want to become a master in the DaVinci Resolve, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Your mastery of DaVinci Resolve is our responsibility. We'll be coming up with some more exciting videos for beginners as well as for advanced users. That's all guys, we'll be back soon with some more DaVinci Resolve tutorials. Keep learning and keep growing. Thank you for watching.